hello. You don't know us, but we know you. We know Forrest. Only the best will understand. Only the best will prevail. And just like that, I'm back. And I'm not even in the right position to talk about everything. So let's just talk about Tetris. Take a look. I'm sure you know how the game works. You have these falling pieces called tetraminos, which are just shapes comprised of four squares. With your main goal to clear as many lines as possible. They fall from the top, you can manipulate them, move them around, rotate them. But if you stack it so high that the tetraminos touch the top, the game ends. I swear, it's one of the easiest games to play, but one of the hardest games to master. And since I'll never be good as this guy. How's this gonna play out? Oh, okay, he that's takes the perfect, double. perfect, perfect. It's set up now. He's still just waiting. The Tetris 13 now. piece drought. 17 piece drop. There's the, the double. Bar. Boom. There it is. Tetris Boom. for Joseph. And York. And we have a new Tetris world champion. Yeah, he's really good. So I figured I'd build an AI to do it for me. Now let's get to coding the game itself. We want to start off by throwing the board up on the screen. And then we want to make sure we have all of our shapes. Now, this is a little bit more complex than just drawing a 10 by 20 board, but it's really just a bunch of matrices and for loops. And we'll use this logic to generate each piece. We'll basically store it in a bag. That way we can pull it out at random and plop it on the proper spot on the board. All right, that's great and all, but I gotta test out each piece to make sure they're all good. So when I hit the space bar, I wanted to replace the current piece with the next piece in our bag until we run out. This isn't something we want in the game forever, but for testing purposes, I'm happy with it. Now let's add in some gravity. Looking good, uh, no, haven't put in collision detection yet. Forgot about that one. Let me just quickly get this up to speed. As you can see, we can move left, right, we can rotate the piece, and we can also soft drop. The piece gets locked in, next piece is generated, so on and so forth. Oh, we can also hard drop. Let me just throw in the UI. We gotta keep our score here. Now it's time for testing, and uh, if you don't know, there are so many different variations of Tetris, I, I figured it would be best that I lay out the guidelines here. So every single level is worth 10 lines. So you get 10 lines, you advance a level. Every time you advance a level, the speed increases by these values right here. This is the only value table I could find for the Tetris speed increase. And I took out hard drop for the AI so we could actually see it drop. However, what you will see with the AI is that it's continuously soft dropping. Because I said every time you make your move, make sure you soft drop thereafter because every single soft drop is worth one point. And if you're watching this as like a pro Tetris player or something, and I just like completely botched these guidelines, <laughs> my bad. Just let me know and I'll fix it if I ever decide to revisit this Tetris AI. I decided to upscale the game, you know, make it a little bit bigger and refactor quite a bit of code to make it work properly with the AI. And this is my first attempt. As you can see, it's not really working too well. Everything, it's just lining everything up on the right side, going from there, and it, it's not really learning anything. So that's, that was the main problem. Obviously something went awry when coding up the AI, but regardless, I knew just by looking at it that even if it was learning, it was never gonna be as good as some of those Grandmaster Tetris players. And that was the goal, not necessarily to beat them one-on-one, -on -one, but to try to at least get around the same high score as them. So I did what any competent programmer would do and took to the internet. I wanted to find out exactly what heuristics I ought to look out for when playing the game Tetris so I could know how to train my AI. And there were four that just kept popping up. This included aggregate height, completed lines, holes, and bumpiness. So I just coded up this logic as well as our genetic algorithm to give my AI an actual fighting chance. Now this is what I wanted. Off the rip, we're doing much better. Generation one, player one, better than whatever generation we got up to in the previous AI. And to give you a better understanding of what is going on here, you can see on the right of the screen, we have our level, we have our lines, we have our score, and then we have our generation. Each generation has a population of 100 players. Currently, we're in generation one, watching player 18. Once player 18 dies, if they're not the last living, it'll move on to the best player. So the one with the highest score, once that one dies, it'll move to the next one with the highest score until all players in generation one are dead and generation two is populated using our genetic algorithm. It's really just like any other genetic algorithm. For starters, if you didn't notice, we ended generation one on player 18, we started generation two with player 18. That is because our genetic algorithm takes the best player from the previous generation and moves it over to the next generation. 
We also have a couple of the best players from the previous generation reproduce to create like a really good child. So hopefully they can do better than their parents and they continue to reproduce and get better and better and better. And we also mutate a subset of the population ever so slightly to see if it makes them a little bit better, a little bit worse, and then we adjust. And drop a like on this video if you appreciate me not including all 48 hours of this AI at work. And don't dislike it if you wish I included all that, just leave a comment down below so I can know which one of y'all are maniacs. I actually think we gotta speed it up even more. So instead of just 10x speed, what I'm gonna do is take the last three or four seconds of each generation so we can see how our AI progresses. Boom, and that's it. That is the highest score we're gonna get with this iteration of the AI. Over the next few generations, it continues to break over 100,000 points, and I'm sure if we kept it running that it would continue to break the highest score, maybe little by little, but that's not good enough for us. If we wanna hit that million mark, if we wanna break Nest Tetris, we gotta do something a little bit different, and that is, well, give it the key advantage that we have as a player, and that is the ability to preview the next piece. Well, that wasn't so hard. Now let's talk about what that means. The difference between the old AI and the new AI is only the ability to look ahead on the next piece, but it really makes a big difference. I mean, if I know how to math right, without the ability to see the next piece, any given Tetris piece has anywhere from nine to 34 possible next moves. And what that means for the AI is that that's all that has to compute, anywhere from nine to 34 moves for any given piece. But if we give our AI the ability that every Tetris player has, and that is to preview the next piece, then we gotta take into consideration the branching factor of Tetris, which it's really just a bunch of hibbity hoopla, but I'm gonna explain it while the AI does its thing. At the root of it, in computing tree data structures game theory, the branching factor is the number of children at each node, the out degree. <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. In layman's terms, it's the number of successors generated by a given node, or in our instance, the number of next possible moves for each current possible move. But because our values aren't uniform, you must figure out a mean branching factor by taking into consideration every possible move for each piece. So for the square, since it's symmetric under rotation, it can be placed in nine positions. The line has two distinct rotations, horizontal and vertical. In a horizontal position, it can be placed seven positions. In the vertical, it can be placed 10. The S, Z, L, and J pieces all have two distinct rotations. In their horizontal rotation, they can be placed eight positions. In their vertical rotation, they can be placed nine positions. And the T piece, it has four distinct rotations. In the horizontal rotation, it can be placed eight positions. In either vertical rotation, it can be placed nine positions. These numbers allow us to find the mean branching factor for our pieces, and that is the average amount of moves for each piece. With that, if we decided to incorporate our branching factor without the ability to see the next piece, our AI would have to evaluate the 18 possible moves for the current piece, as well as all possible moves for all seven pieces for that next piece. So resulting in the AI needing to perform an average of 2,268 heuristic evaluations in order to place the current piece in the most optimal location. But because we're given it the ability to see the next piece, it only needs to perform 324. All right, enough nerding out, let's speed this thing up. And while the AI does its thing, I wanna take this time to, I mean, I guess just address the elephant in the room, and that's the fact that I've been gone for, what, a month and a half, two months, and I'm not gonna talk about what happened over the past month and a half, two months with all that, but I would like to ask for y'all's help. I plan to continue on with AI, but the thing is a lot more time and energy goes into a single video than me just sitting in front of a camera and talking about software engineering. So if you wanna see more videos like this of me actually coding instead of me talking about coding, then share this video. Liking, commenting, and subscribing, of course, that always helps. And I'll ask you to do that right now. Give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. But sharing the video with your friends, with your family, this will help a lot more than you'll ever know. And your friend doesn't even need to be interested in coding because this isn't necessarily a coding video like you used to make all the time talking about coding or, or anything like that. This is about artificial intelligence. This is about machine learning. Everyone I know is interested in that type of stuff. So thank you and uh, I'll stop begging for shares and likes and comments and subscriptions. Okay. I lied. One more thing that I need to touch on because people have been asking a lot due to COVID-19. First Supply Coffee is still roasting and shipping out coffee every single week. I will leave a link down in the description below in case you want coffee delivered to your house instead of going out to the store and getting it during this time.
but enough of that. This is the game. This game. We're approaching 1 million. Oh my gosh. You remember, my game's not going to break because I don't have it limited up to one less than 1 million. We're going to do it. Oh. 1 million! <laughs> oh, that's, that's satisfying. Yo, even if it did just end right after 1 million, it doesn't matter. 1 million... 18,616. That is our high score. I don't even care if we beat it or not. We hit a million. That was our goal for this video. So I think I'm done here. And I didn't even use all the tricks up my sleeve. I was going to make the AI prioritize Tetris basically every single time unless it was going to die. Although we did see it kind of do this, but it wasn't, I mean, we could have made it better. Something else I really wanted to do is see how quickly we could get to a million. But we, we hit the goal for this video. Like I said, I'm done here. We could save that for another video. And if not, I have a dozen other game ideas that I know y'all really enjoy. Just subscribe and share this video with a bunch of friends. That'll show me you like this new content. Until then.